We live in strange times. Right now, we're distracted by the sudden death of Queen Elizabeth, who's kind of occupying the headlines. But the big news in Saskatchewan, Canada, lately, is three violent episodes occurring over the long Labor Day weekend. In the first, two men on a native reserve and in the nearby town of Weldon went on a door-to-door -door murder spree using knives. The motive has been speculated upon, but nothing is certain except that 10 people were killed and 18 more were wounded, making this the biggest mass murder in Saskatchewan history. Both of the murderers are dead. Again, no details are available about exact causes of death, but that episode is over except for the families that need our support as they try to find healing. The second event was a shooting related to stealing gas from a service station near the town of Maidstone. Apparently shots were fired inside a home as well as a residence had been fired upon. No injuries have been reported and there's no clue about who might have done this except that the mysterious person was driving a newer model black Mustang. Yet a third incident involves police looking for two more suspects involved in shootings on yet another native reserve in the province with no apparent connection to either of the other events. No injuries are reported in this third event. What links these three events now over the weekend is the advice from the police. Stay inside and lock your doors. In other words, as actress Gina Davis said in the 1986 movie The Fly, be afraid, be very afraid. The watchword over two years of COVID has also been stay inside, be afraid. I still see people walking down the street or even driving down the highway alone wearing masks. You can't enter any health facility in our local area without putting on a mask. People no longer shake hands on meeting and socializing has virtually disappeared. Yesterday, my wife expressed her fear by uncharacteristically insisting that I keep the doors locked during the day while we were home. We live in a small Saskatchewan town, a couple hundred kilometers from where these events took place, and I insisted that the odds of a killer showing up here to threaten our family were less than the odds of our house being hit by a meteor. But still, she locked the doors. She is afraid, very afraid. The school system here is also afraid. After two years of restrictions at the schools for COVID, now the schools have something new to be afraid of. Now they're keeping the local school locked and not letting kids out for recess or playtime. There is fear aplenty all around us. What should we do with all of our fear and anxiety? I want to suggest three truths. First, we need to recognize that danger is real and that there really are lots of things that it's realistic to be afraid of. A character in a movie from back in the 70s, while riding in a car down a narrow road, observed that every time another car passed them going the other way, they came within three feet of death. That tiny scene from that minor movie, I don't even remember the title, has stuck with me for almost 50 years. Because it's demonstrably true. Life is inherently dangerous, and so maybe the person cowering in a corner curled in the fetal position, is more rational than someone going out to work every day. On the other hand, our second truth is that cowering in a corner is not a sustainable lifestyle. The person cowering in the corner will eventually starve to death unless somebody who braves the world goes out and brings back what the fearful person needs to survive. Somebody needs to brave the dangerous world even while knowing that it's perilous. As Winston Churchill put it considerably more than 50 years ago, when you find yourself going through hell, keep going. If we find ourselves in a hellish world and just curl up into our own little ball, then we remain in hell. The only way out of the hell we find ourselves in is to go through it and out the other side. Churchill became the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom in the darkest days of World War II, only weeks before France, the last bastion of freedom in continental Europe, 
collapsed and left the Brits scrambling to organize a motley crew of military vessels, fishing boats, and private pleasure craft to sail across the English Channel and ferry the British Army home. Churchill not only had to keep a stiff upper lip and bolster British confidence, he also had to make the hard decisions. The French wanted RAF, the Royal Air Force, air support against the onslaught of German armor. But Churchill knew that France would fall imminently anyway, and that Britain would need those aircraft for her own defense against invasion. So he refused, a very unpopular decision at the time, and had just barely enough planes and pilots to push back the Luftwaffe during the Battle of Britain. He made the hard decision. Can you be the Churchill that your family needs, that your community needs, your church needs, your business needs? There's lots to be afraid of. Supply chain issues, inflation pushing up costs, customers cutting spending, the threat of government-imposed lockdowns at any moment, the possibility of catching some novel disease, even the possibility of some knife-wielding maniac showing up out of the blue. The third truth, then, is that we have a choice. We can choose to be paralyzed with fear, stay inside, and lock our doors, as most of the world has been doing for the past two years. Or we can choose to face our fears and make the hard decisions that will carry us on to our own VE day. There have always been murderers out there who might get you. There have always been mysterious, invisible bugs that might get you. You might be hit by a bus. So, look twice before you cross the road. Wash your hands frequently. Be wary of strangers carrying knives and guns. Do whatever necessary things there are that you can do, but don't stop living. Get out there and conquer your enemy, whatever you perceive that enemy to be. Maybe it means concentrating on losing weight after decades of being too busy to care about that. That's my battle right now. Or maybe you need to conquer an addiction. Or you need to fix your marriage. Or fix your job. Or build a whole new life somewhere, somehow, somewhere else. You'll never accomplish those goals if you stay home and lock your doors. Get out and walk, meet people, share ideas, get involved in your community, start a new business, heck, start up a YouTube channel. Make a leap of faith, take a risk. Lao Tzu said that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Decide where you want to go and take that first step today. Only you know what that step is, but in your heart, you do know it, and you've been afraid to make the tough decision. If you've been waiting for a push, then please take a hint and consider this your push. And may God bless you on your new journey. Please like my little video and subscribe so that we can journey together and we'll live Robert Browning's words. Grow old along with me. The best is yet to be. Bye-bye.